James Mel Endes. Welcome to the tasting table. This wine is next from the producer Gradishuta by Robert Princic. It is a Colio DOC wine, Drevala Giala. It is a 21 vintage. I'll give my thoughts, impressions, and point score on this wine. Additionally, I'll show some photos of this region's principal city that I visited just this June. So stay tuned. So please be sure to hit the like button and be sure to subscribe. You'll see the latest videos that I'm producing. So here's a map right here to see Gorizia or Colio DOC. And you're gonna see in the Friuli, Venezia, Giulia, that's the region. And it really is a newer part of Italy. So this becomes part of Italy, especially this particular area since 1920, it is part of Italy. This has been part of Austria since the 1500s. In the uh, early 1800s, it becomes part of France for about four years, reverts back to the Austrians and is in the Austrians' hands until the 1920s, 1920 to be precise, and then it becomes part of the Kingdom of Italy. And so this is a region that when you visit, and here's some pictures right here, it definitely feels more Austrian with the Onion Dome, churches, and just the feel of the art and the architecture definitely reminds me of Austria. And so you have that identifier there. You see that this is a region that is very uh, a mix of cultures. So you're going to find that this region has two areas, Nova Gorica and Gorizia. So Gorizia would be the Italian side and Novo Gorica would be the Slovenian side. Now it used to be one city. So the western half becomes part of Italy, the kingdom and later the republic. The eastern portion, which is a newer part, becomes part of the new state of Yugoslavia, eventually becomes Slovenia uh, once more. So this is an area that is uh, quite uh, known by the Austrians. It is something known as the Austrian Nice. Think of the French Nice. So this becomes a very popular retreat for Austrian nobles coming to this region. It's very beautiful and there are even palm trees there. Now the July Revolution of 1830, the French Bourbons moved to this region and uh, they're actually buried in crypts in the monastery, which is actually on the Novo Gorica side. So plenty of history here. Uh, from this region. So the look and feel is very different than many parts of Italy, but it is a crossroads. And so it, uh, first of all, Friuli is a fantastic place to visit. This is very close to Trieste. So it's about 45 minutes away. It was a five euro train ride. And so very inexpensive uh, to get there. So the grape variety has been mentioned quite often. So in 1296, there's a dispute between the Bishop of Trieste, which is nearby, and the uh, monastery of San Giorgio Maggiore in Venice, which is settled by the Pope, but the grape itself is actually mentioned. So this grape variety was called Rabola, R-A-B-O-L-A. -A. Now this grape variety is also further mentioned in 1299, just three years later, in the nearby city of Udine, and it's referred to as Rabiola. In 1402, the city of Udine restricts Rabola Giala from being adulterated. This grape variety in the 14th century is very well known. It is being grown in Friuli in this region, as well as Istria and of course, Slovenia. Now the fourth Austrian Enological Conference held in Gorizia in 1891, uh, consider this the best of all deserving in every respect and further cultivation of this great variety. So even as late as 1990s, you only saw 1% of white wines from Friuli DOCs containing the Rebola Giala. Today, that's a very different story. It's one of the popular varieties and so something you're gonna see quite often and it's a delicious variety. I love seeing this bottle silhouette from the Colio DOC. You see this quite often and I think it's a really outstanding touch to differentiate. So here's a back label for you to look at here. The grapes are organic and it is a vegan friendly wine, 12.5% ABV. Now vinification notes are the following. Traditionally, the grapes are cryomacerated for 24 hours after which they are pressed, fermented at controlled temperatures and the wines are kept early until bottling. Now the nose is expressing beautiful notes and outstanding uh, capture of white peach, passion fruit, lemon skin, uh, citrus skin, as well as uh, mineral notation and a minute hint of gardenia. Next is the palate characterization. Sophisticated wine, full of finesse, beauty, elegance, and grace. So in this I'm getting a character of lemon curd, as well as bitter orange skin, dried citrus, graphite, and oyster shell. This wine is 95 points out of 100 points. $23.99 is a suggested retail. Gorgeous wine to enjoy with seafood, as well as cheeses and charcuterie. 
Uh, I think it's a defined wine, very elegant, and one that just definitely reminds me of that particular visit to this region. Now be sure to hit the subscription button to see the latest videos that I'm producing, and please give a like as well. And uh, in the meantime, you'll find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, WordPress, and Tumblr. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you very soon. Salute!